Metropolitan Andrei Sheptitsky, decided to go to the church of the poor people, the Ukrainians. But that was not before he had to endure great resistance from his father and from Polish society. This was really a, a question discussed in, in the parlors of uh, the Polish aristocracy. He was from an old Ukrainian family, which in today's terms, his family would be considered billionaires. They were among the nobility of the Austro-Hungarian Empire when Szeptycki was born. Szeptycki himself was a count. Of course, German was the official language. The family language by that time was Polish, but uh, all the neighbors, uh, the villagers around their estate uh, spoke Ukrainian. And so uh, he grew up in a multicultural setting. From 1901 to 1944, he was the head of the Ukrainian Catholic Church. And he wanted to lift up his people uh, who were when he became Archbishop, they, uh, that part of uh, Ukraine was one of the poorest corners of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. He did raise the socioeconomic level of his congregation. He had a very encompassing, uh, holistic approach to ministry, which touched upon um, not only the explicitly spiritual questions, and moral questions, but uh, social, political, economic, cultural questions. He also worked on uh, the development of a kind of a national independence, uh, because it was clear that in the pecking order, the Ukrainians were maybe on the third or fourth rung. The Austrians, then the Poles, then the urban Jews, uh, and Ukrainians were at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder. They had very few people that went to universities. They couldn't support uh, their children uh, for university studies, so he launched an idea to create uh, a university for the Ukrainians. He, during his, his lifetime, he worked on that project. In 1928, he founded a theological academy which was supposed to be the theology faculty of a future university. Subsequently, when the Soviet Union collapsed, this Sheptitsky's idea of the university was brought back to Ukraine in uh, the early 90s, and the Theological Academy was revived in 1994. And on the basis of that academy in 2002, the Ukrainian Catholic University was formed. And all of that, in many ways, is, you know, is inspired by the kind of broad vision of Metropolitan Andrei Sheptitsky. By the time of the Second World War, he was the grand old man, tied to a wheelchair. He was crippled by a debilitating disease. During World War II, in Western Ukraine, over 95% of the Jewish population was annihilated under the Nazis. And so Sheptitsky was caught along with his people in this devastating period of history uh, that contradicted everything he stood for. And he did what he could. He couldn't do very much at the time of the Nazi occupation. He harbored Jews. He uh, wrote a letter called Thou Shall Not Kill. He tried to protect uh, Ukrainians. He died in November, November 1st, 1944. The war had not been over, but the second Soviet occupation had begun. And uh, before his eyes was uh, a devastated landscape a demoralized population, and a church that was about to be destroyed and rendered illegal by the Soviets. And yet, apparently on his deathbed, he um, articulated a prophecy uh, that um, the church would revive. When a superpower 
like the Soviet Union, was using its propaganda resources to besmirch the legacy of Sheptitsky, it was easy not to recognize his virtues. So the recognition of Sheptitsky is something that really is happening only over the last 30 years. I think he's the greatest Ukrainian of the 20th century and uh, his greatness is still in the future.